bitches. How you doing? Um, it's another beautiful day here in Canada. Um, it's nice and hot and sunny, but I'm wearing my toque because that's just what we do in Canada. Um, it's kind of a all season sort of a hat covering for us. So don't come at me for that. Um, and today we are going to talk a little bit about how my practice has changed over the years. Um, I think that's sort of part of part of the human condition is we're always growing and changing. And so sort of how, what does my witchcraft practice look like through all of my sort of life's ups and downs and changes? Uh, for those of you who are new around here, my name is Taya. Welcome to the channel. And for those of you who are returning viewers, maybe coming in from another video, welcome back. Um, I'm so glad you've come back again. And yeah, everybody, please consider subscribing. It's a great way to help us build the channel. So how my practice has changed over the years. Um, I've been practicing on and off for just over 25 years. So we start back in the late 90s. Dating myself here. Back in the late 90s, uh, I started out, I guess you could say Wiccan. Um, I was at a local, it was kind of a goth store. It was called Sanctuary down on White Ave, for those of you who are familiar with the Edmonton area. And uh, they had this book. And I'd heard of Wicca and witchcraft. But I really didn't know much about it. And I had this book called Wicca for the Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. And I was like, oh, my God, a few extra bucks in the bank account. I'm going to grab that. And I picked it up and I read it cover to cover in like a day. It was fascinating. And I loved it. I loved the witchcraft. I loved um, this idea of working with the goddess. I loved just about everything about it, but I really was having a hard time with the more ritualistic components, the like casting a circle and, you know, praying to the god and goddess and, and stuff like that didn't sit. It just, it just didn't feel right to me, but I sort of dabbled away over the years and I slowly kind of stepped away from this idea of being Wiccan and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm a witch, but I don't think I'm Wiccan. But at the time, this is like the like the mid to late 90s. Most of the information available was through books. The internet wasn't really so much of a thing yet. Um, so really a lot of what I was getting was through books. And the books that were brought in were predominantly Wiccan. The books that were published at the time were predominantly Wiccan. Um, it was really, there really wasn't anything else out there about witchcraft in general, about other types of witchcraft. It was very Wiccan based. So I was kind of like felt stuck. Like, I know this isn't really for me, but I feel like there's something there, but I don't really know what to do. So I kind of, yeah, I just dabbled away over the years. And eventually I had my daughter. About five years later, I had my daughter and I realized Witchcraft was definitely my jam. Having my kids, both of them, was a very, um, it's a very spiritual event in my life. Um, growing another human being inside my body and then birthing them into the outside world is kind of a freaking trip. And um, it really made me realize that there is so much more to life than just your mundane everyday grind right? It, it really got me in touch with this idea of spirituality. And having my daughter made me really know that I wanted that like higher calling from religion, from a religious aspect, but I didn't want that ritualistic component. I was still sort of chafing at my Catholic upbringing. So I sort of continued to identify as a witch. And then this idea of an eclectic witch very much caught on. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's me. I'm an eclectic witch. But over time, because as an eclectic witch, there wasn't really a lot of information out there about how to do that or be that. It was sort of this catch-all for, well, I'm not Wiccan, but what else is there? <laughs> so I'm eclectic. I'm just going to pull all sorts of different things. And I was like, okay, so I'll be this eclectic witch. But it slowly, because it didn't really connect with me, I kind of faded. My practice really faded away over the years. I was still very nature-based. I still very much believed in the goddess. I believed in, um, you know, I grew all my own food. I loved camping in the outdoors. I had a huge collection of witchy things. Um, I very much connected with the lifestyle, with, with the basic core beliefs, but I just wasn't really putting it into practice, if that makes sense. Um... And then sort of at this, 
I'll call it a spiritual low point. I met my husband. We got married. We had my son. It all happened very quickly um, in a very good way. And having my son, again, it was a very difficult birth with my son. And it really retouched off this idea in my mind that I really needed to reconnect with my spirituality. And at that point, I had a complete mental breakdown. <laughs> um, I went through a period of a couple of years where I was very up and down, up and down. I'm, uh, in retrospect, I mean, I'm sure I had uh, PPD, I had postpartum depression, um, but I also have a history of depression, of anxiety. I was diagnosed with the um, generalized anxiety and ADHD, which really threw my life into a whole tailspin um, because medications, right, the anxiety medication took away my anxiety, but my anxiety was medicating for the ADHD, so then nothing was medicating for the ADHD, and it went off the rails, and then my life fell apart, even though I felt really good, nothing was working, and um, yeah, it was a whole, it was a whole to-do. And so I had to, basically, I got in with a really good psychiatrist and I started, you know, seeing my psychologist on the regular. And part of my recovery process was realizing that, yeah, I really need this spiritual aspect in my life, this higher purpose, if you will. So at this point, I don't know, I just sort of, it's like I just sort of forgotten about witchcraft at this point. And I really kind of got interested in researching Buddhism. Um, I still really love Buddhism. I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful religion. Um, it's very much about mindfulness and meditation, and that worked very w well. That fit very well with my recovery program. Um, and so I spent a couple of years sort of reading and researching about Buddhism, and I was kind of starting to think about connecting with some temples here locally. And I realized two really important things. What I was looking for was tradition but that my heart really lay with witchcraft. And so at this point, I was like, maybe I need to find something here locally. And I, I looked locally and I really couldn't find anything that wasn't Wiccan. And I thought maybe I need to join a Wiccan coven. Maybe that's the path I need to take. And I did go so far as to contact some people here locally and kind of start some conversations with people about their you know, the, the coven structures and what was going on locally. And it just, I just couldn't do it. It was just, no, it was just not for me. And at the same time, as I was sort of making these connections with the Wiccan community, I rediscovered a whole another world of witchcraft that I never even knew existed. Um, there was this whole world of witchcraft content, predominantly books, but also like online blogs, um, YouTubers, and um, they were all about traditional witchcraft. And I was like, hmm, what's this? Never heard of this. And um, I was looking at authors like Nigel Pearson, Gemma Gary, Laura Tempest Zakroff, and Keldon. It was really Keldon's book, um, The Crooked Path, that got me... Um, it's a very basic 101 introduction to traditional witchcraft um, that pulled together the higher pieces from like Nigel Pearson, Gemma Gary, um, and then Laura Tempest Zakroff, her, her book Weave the Liminal, which is very much about um, creating your own practice, paired really well with this Keldon's book, which was very much about here is how we do this practice. And the two of them kind of wove together really nicely. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, oh! I found my thing. So I spent a year really studying traditional witchcraft, um, right, diving into as many books as I could find. And then I found, um, about a year after that, I found Lorelai Black and the Red Thread Academy, which is where I study now. She teaches um, American folkloric witchcraft, which is a traditional witchcraft branch. Um, and I guess I've sort of came to the conclusion that if I want to see traditional folkloric witchcraft in my area, I might need to be the one to bring it here. Um, there may be groups operating in my area, but I was not able to find them, so they weren't highly visible. And um, yeah, so if I have to do it myself, maybe I have to do it myself. So my practice is now what I would consider traditional or folkloric witchcraft. So what is that? Um, I'm gonna take this, this is from Keldon's Instagram. But I thought it was a really good little summary of what traditional witchcraft is. So many people mistakenly assume that traditional witchcraft is one unified tradition that stretches far back into the distant past. It's not. And if anybody tells you it is, they're full of it. However, traditional witchcraft is actually an umbrella term for many different forms of non-Wiccan witchcraft. 
although it draws inspiration from the past, it's not an unbroken lineage to like an ancient witch cult. Okay, by traditional, we're really referring to the various folkloric traditions. So stories, spells, charms, recipes, songs, prayers, etc. Those type of things that we use to inform our craft. So you could define traditional witchcraft as any non Wiccan based form of craft that is inspired by folklore and features an emphasis on working operative magic, journeying to the other world, partnering with spirits, and establishing a deep relationship with the local landscape. So let's break that down. How does that sort of apply to my practice? So it's non Wiccan based form of craft. So it is actually is very different from Wicca. Uh, once you kind of get into the real the core beliefs. Um, it's very different. If you look at my previous video about, uh, I think it was, however many 13 signs that you might be a traditional witch. Uh, you can check that one out for some I some of the um, ideas that kind of come out of traditional witchcraft. Um, but it's definitely non Wiccan. It's inspired by folklore. So it's inspired by stories, spells, charms, recipes, songs, prayers um, by what are they called? Um, the trial records from um, the witch trials in Europe, from the witch trials in Salem, but predominantly like um, the Scottish witch trials and Isabel Gaudi. I mean, that's a huge informer of my practice. And it features an emphasis on working operative magic. So actually performing magic, journeying into the other world, so hedge crossing, spending time in the other world, the, the, um, the other world, the underworld, right? And partnering with spirits, whether you're doing that in the other worlds or you're doing that through your work here on the mundane plane, but you're, you're working with spirits, you're making packs with spirits, you're, um, you work quite heavily with spirits and spirits of the land, spirits of your ancestors, spirits of deity, right? There's all sort of different levels of spirits that you can work with as well as establishing a deep relationship with the local landscape. So like one part of what I work with is um, I'm very heavily informed by um, Scottish folklore because my ancestry is Scottish. And, but a lot of like the, the plants and herbs that they talk about that were important to certain spells, I don't have access to them here in Canada. So I can either buy them from a Scottish practitioner or I can find a local substitution from my local land. And then I work with um, the spirit of the willow tree in my front yard, um, the spirits of the lakes in my local community, um, the different plants that grow in my yard and around in my community, and all these different sort of um, things that I pull from my local landscape um, are very, it's very important, as well as like the seasons and the changing of the seasons. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. Like I don't follow the eight Sabbaths of the year. Um, that's a very Wiccan concept, right? I have my own based on when different things turn on the wheel here in my local area. Um, I will, you know, things like Christmas and Easter are still part of my wheel of the year. So anyways, I think that an important aspect of being human and working on your spirituality is that we are not stagnant, right? We're not stagnant. And we are growing, changing beings. Humans are growing and evolving throughout our lifetimes. And so our witchcraft practice has to change too. So even if you started as a Wiccan, and you may remain a Wiccan 25 years later, your practice will still have grown and deepened within that Wiccan framework, right? So your practice evolves as you evolve as a person. It changes to meet your times and needs in life. And you really end up creating this deeper understanding over time of different concepts and ideologies, right? Um, like when I started out, I was like, okay, I know how to cast a circle, but it doesn't really speak. I don't know. I don't really get it. Now, all these years later, now I understand what we're trying to create when we lay a compass, what that means, what... Um, what that does psychologically for, for myself, what that does in the spirit world. Um, I have this very much deeper understanding now of why I might do that. So yeah, basically that's, I guess, my story. That's where I was, where I've been, where my practice is at now. And 
yeah, it's grown and changed significantly over the years. So tell me, how has your practice grown and changed with you over the years? Um, how have you evolved in your witchcraft? I would love to know. Leave me a comment and otherwise we will catch you in the next video. Mwah! Thanks so much, you guys. <laughs>